to address the issues facing <laughs> Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. Happy Boxing Day, and for that, we bring on two political heavyweights. Yes, that's Susan Richardson Williams. She's a Republican, and Don Bosch, he's the Democrat, runs his own law firm. She runs her own PR firm. We hope you had a Merry Christmas, and it's time to get into some politics and reflect on 2021. This is one of our favorite shows of the year where we talk about who made political news, uh, headlines, good and bad. And Don and Susan, we're gonna start at the local level. And this is where we ask you to pick your political winners, losers, and also the local issue of 2021. So Don, let's start with you and talk first about your local winner of 2021. I'm going to lead off with a, a surprise, at least for Susan and over half of our demographic with a Republican, and that is Larson J. And the reason I picked Larson, uh, Larson did a really nice job of threading the needle. He was a sensible, moderate Republican in a red county that uh, stood up for issues concerning masking and public spaces. Uh, for listening to the science for vaccine, did a fine job on county commission, leading county commission for a good part of the year, uh, and uh, really has positioned himself well, should he choose to do so, uh, as a candidate either in the county or even possibly at the city level uh, as a Republican, as a moderate Republican, that he, the Democrats don't mind him, so to speak, and most of the Republicans still respect and like him. Maybe some of those on the very far right are upset with him, but uh, uh, I, I, I think Larson Jay did a really nice job as somebody who's fairly new to politics. Susan, your local political winner. Well, Bosh, you probably just kill Larson Jay's chances of winning anything. Nah, by Larson Jay. Maybe not in the city I haven't, maybe not in the city I haven't, but, and I haven't um, endorsed him, so. I got gotcha. you. Well, I, I will surprise some people, too. Um, I think the local winner was, I will say, the Democrat Party, even though they didn't run city council candidates as Democrats. I think we all knew they were Democrats and they they ran races for council. Republicans ran against them and the Democrats won every seat. Now, are they totally Democrat? Yeah. But did they have a D beside their name? No. Um, but I think we all knew who, who they were and what their party affiliate, affiliation was. So uh, I got to give a I got to give a hat tip to them. Um, they ran incumbents and they won substantially. But um, I don't really count the Republicans as necessarily losers on that. I do think they made. Um, a first bite at the apple and did fairly well, 45% in most cases. But um, I'll give it to the to the Democrats and to the city council members who actually won the races this year. Your reaction to Susan's pick, Don? Uh, well, I, I think she's right. And in fact, uh, uh, while she says that the, uh, the Republicans weren't losers in the city, that's exactly who I have for my losers in the city race. They did an abysmal job. Their first bite at the apple wasn't barely a nibble. They lost on average by 20 points in every race. There was not a single race that was close and it didn't matter who the candidate was. There, there were some hard right Republicans and some more moderate Republicans, and they all lost by basically the same margin. One of the Republicans and Jim Clenaris raised more money than most of the other ones put together. So uh, uh, it, it really didn't matter. It shows that again, that Knoxville uh, city uh, is fairly democratic leaning, heavily democratic leaning, and that right now the Republicans have the same problem that the Democrats have in the county. They're just not making many inroads. Susan, how about your political loser of 2021? Well, this one, I don't like to call any person a loser uh, because I like a lot of them personally, but I think the loser in our city this year has to be the, the police chief, E. Thomas, who is retiring. But we've had so much gun violence in our city this year. As far as I know, it's maybe the largest uh, record number um, ever. And we're all familiar with what happened with the students out at Austin East and several um, teenagers were killed out there. And, I, and that, you know, I don't know what Eve could have done about it, 
but I think it happened under her watch. And so because of that, I, I, I'm going to say that she, or at least the city police department, maybe were the losers. And, you know, it also, that will also reflect on Mayor Kincannon because eventually the buck stops with her. So um, I know they're getting someone new and, and they've also had an issue, I think, with the deputy uh, police chief as well uh, in the last few days or so. But um, like I said, I hate I hate to refer to anyone as losers, but I just think that's been such a huge issue in our city this past year that we have to we have to recognize it and talk about it. You're referencing Deputy Chief Green's abrupt retirement and the accusations right. against him from people uh, right. outside and inside the department. Um, let's move to the issue of 2021 locally. Don, what's yours? Um, you know, there were several, and, and to sort of follow on Susan, I, I, we would be really hard-pressed not to say that the, uh, that the East Knoxville shooting deaths, uh, just the astronomical number in comparison to past years, has to really be the issue. I, I tend to agree with Susan that uh, Chief Thomas has had a very, very tough year, not only with the violence within our community that is on the increase, but with the morale at KPD, uh, with some of the internal discipline issues. Uh, you mentioned Ch uh, Deputy Chief Green, uh, some of the issues concerning uh, alleged racism within the department. Um, so, but again, going back, I, I think the the, the main issue and, and really the negative issue is the shootings. There are some positive issues I just want to briefly talk about. The downtown ballpark and the, the development that will occur on basically the Brown site, I think it's going to be a good thing for our community and the private public partnership that's uh, been put into place. And I think the stability at the University of Tennessee from the, the presidency with Randy Boyd, the chancellorship with uh, Donde Plowman, the athletic department with Danny White, the coaches, the success of the programs. We haven't seen this level of stability and, and goodwill at UT in many, many years. Susan, about 30 seconds for your issue of 2021 locally. Well, they're the same as what Don had, certainly back to the gun violence. The, the downtown stadium has been on everyone's mind, and it's a very positive thing that is happening in our community. And, and I think we'll see that uh, develop over the next several years. And it hopefully will be one of the positive things for a long time. I agree with him about UT. Um, I adore uh, our new chancellor, Donde Plowman. I think she has just been terrific for the university here in Knoxville. Randy Boyd, the, the, the uh, marathoner in Antarctica, has been great for Tennessee as well. So we've had some good things happen in Knoxville this year. We're back on Inside Tennessee right after this with the state political winners and losers of 2021 with our regulars.